Hello, everyone. Welcome to Coach's Corner. You have Ashley and Malik with you. Um, we are on episode eight, you guys. We're so excited. Thank you for following along, following along with us on this journey. Um, today, we are bringing you guys a couple questions, two questions that um, are common in the beginning of your fitness journey. And then one question that we actually got from a listener. So we're stoked. Awesome. It's February. <laughs> Perfect timing, you know, New Year's resolutions about a month in, you know, so right now you might be going through some struggles or some obstacles and uh, we will hopefully will maybe cover them in this episode. The first question, this is the quote that we got. I've seen it multiple times and I've even felt it myself where you haven't gained muscle on a scan. And that's usually where you take a, a body scan and it'll tell you how much muscle you have, but you feel stronger in general during a workout. Even people that have uh, lost muscle will tell me they feel stronger. Why? So that was the question. So we have many different answers mm -hmm. because there's just so many facets to this, yep. right? Like there's just so many things that come into play. One of the things being, we'll just start with um, muscle memory. So this particular like feeling of, of like feeling strength um, and maybe not per se doing like a skin and gaining muscle. Um, it could be muscle memory for some people. This might not be for like a brand new person, but for someone that like worked out before has gained some weight is trying to shed that weight, work out again and kind of lean out <clears throat> that muscle memory. What happens is when you build muscle, those cells, when they like are basically those muscle cells, right. That we're building, building, building. Those don't actually go away. So although you might be like losing muscle and like gaining weight, right? Um, they can get woken up again very quickly. So when you start working out, that muscle memory comes back and it's actually easier to put on. Oh, did you get her? Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. So that that person that has come back from a little bit of like a hiatus of working out, but worked out before that muscle memory, those cells that are still there, they're actually just going to get woken up and they're going to rebuild a lot faster as opposed to someone that's like just beginning from zero, right? Like just starting their journey. Um, yeah. So that's something actually really cool about your body is like when you take a little bit of a break, it's sometimes healthy. Like sometimes you need that rest. Mm -hmm. And then when you get back into the gym, you still feel that strength and you still, that muscle comes back quicker because your body remembers. It remembers like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is how I'm supposed to perform. Kind of like riding, I want to say like riding a bike, but like, you know, if you don't ride the bike for quite a few years, I haven't ridden a bike in a while, but like, if I go pick up a bike. You and know again, how to ride one? Yes. <laughs> Let's test the theory. This, this summer Definitely. with my kids. Because when they start riding their bikes this summer, I'm going to ride a bike again, but I haven't wrote, wrote like, gosh, I haven't been yeah. on a bike in like two or three years, yeah. but it's just comes back. So that's what your body does. That muscle memory, it comes back. The muscle builds fa usually faster and easier yeah. as opposed to your, the first time around when you started your fitness journey and um, you feel the strength again. Like the other day I was actually in the gym with a client and um I don't work out as regularly anymore just because I'm a mom and I don't have always have the time, but I do work out or like, you know, at least twice a week. And, um, I was with this client and I was very just, she's just starting off, but I was like, just very easily moving around the weights, picking up the bar for her, like putting weights on and stuff. And she's like, you're just so strong. I don't understand how you're doing that. Like it was really nothing to me, yeah. but I have done that so much. And previously when I used to lift, I used to lift heavier um, so I think for me too, like I have that natural strength prior to when I like didn't have babies. So it's actually, mm -hmm. your body's like, I mean, you're saying you have that because you've worked out already before you, you've done it for so long before that when you stop and go back, it's, it's a lot, it's a lot easier. I also yeah. um, read somewhere that which we got to start sourcing if we're going to start saying this stuff, but I I know. Read, um, muscle fibers just shrink. So as you're, you know, either building muscle uh, or building strength or, you know, building that foundation in the beginning, uh, if you ever like go away from fitness or, you know, working out and come back, uh, you're just like you said, they didn't go away. They just shrunk. So when you, when you build it back up, it's like you're pumping air into a uh, air mattress, you know, it shrinks into a little box 
But when you, you know, start pumping air into it or start pumping blood in, into that muscle, start putting protein into that, it comes an air mattress. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. No, that's like a perfect analogy. Like, I think everyone will get that. So that was one. I also had um on the notes, uh, something that I, because I, when you asked this, I think I just sent you a whole bunch of bullet points. But another yeah. thing was I uh, put repetitions. So something that I think that when you re do reps a lot, let's say you're a novice and let's say you didn't work out before and you're like, well, I never had muscle to, to begin with. So there's no muscle to like come back, you know, like so, let's say that you didn't work out and you just started when you were 30 or start when you were 24 or start whatever. Uh, you might be going through the gym process and because you're just performing the repetitions itself, you're doing you know, rows more, you're doing push-ups, you're doing pulls. That in general, things get easier when we do it. Naturally. See, 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 she knows. Did like, you hear that? But when we drive, you know, like when, uh, you know, when we drive home after work, we really don't have to put any energy into it because we've done it so many times. You could like be on the phone, like, you know, you could like park your car when you get home and be like, I don't remember that drive home because you're so used to it. Same thing with like the reps. So if you're doing rows a lot more now than you ever have before, you know, you're like, these are a lot easier now. Like this becomes more easier, but you might not necessarily have gained muscle on a scale. It does. It starts to get easier, which is why progressive over overload is so amazing for your body because it starts to get easier. So you're adding more weight and you do feel stronger because then you start adding the weight and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm lifting heavier. And that I, I, I honestly, I think it's also that like um, those endorphins, like, oh man, I'm, I'm feeling stronger. I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. Getting like, you know, getting to the gym, but usually there's some nutrition aspect. So <laughs> what's cool is, you know, sometimes or I don't know, most of the time, maybe sometimes whatever it is, uh, trainers are prescribing you like macros and like a calorie intake. Right. So you come to find out people, people literally are not eating. They're like eating so minimal that when you're not eating enough and you're going to the gym, you would feel tired. Like you would not feel strong. People aren't eating enough and, you know, having just enough food in general in your system will help you lift a little bit more weight. You know, if you eat nothing and then go lift, you're not going to be as strong as if you were to have like a good meal and then go lift. Whereas you're not really building muscle in that time frame. You're just having more nutrition or better nutrition. Yeah. So you're or, your body better. And also like people usually are so afraid of carbs yeah. and like, and are super low carbs. So like your carbs are like your energy source, you know? Yeah. So like, then we get people to realize like, look, carbs are friends. And then they yeah. are like, oh my gosh, I have all this energy. Yeah. <laughs> like they're not having a crash. Carbohydrate. The one thing I actually like heard this the other day, and this might help pe some people. If it helps one person, that 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 will make my day. But <laughs> what are muscles mainly made out of? Our body mostly made out of water. water. Carbohydrate. They're there to help hydrate your muscles and hydrate your body, which is true. You know, if you have too much, you just have too much water, or you get bloated. You know, which is water weight, but just don't have too much. But it, it is essential. Especially, I'm you know learning a lot with athletes. If you're an athlete, you need carbs. You know, if you're doing bodybuilding and you have a certain, I know there's certain things that keto helps. So I, don't, you know, I don't want to say it's good for everybody, but you know, for most, and everyone needs to deal with diet themselves and on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But yeah, yeah, like whatever works best for you. And yeah. and then the other thing is usually people are like super, super low on protein. And that's just mostly because they're just unaware. Like if, unless you're tracking, like you're kind of just like, you know, whatever, eating, whatever, you don't really know. And, um, once you do track, you start to learn. So then you can like automatically do it and you don't have to track all the time. But like, I talked to someone that was having like two, I think one, one egg for breakfast and a toast. I think that was like her mm -hmm. breakfast. And she was working out like, um, really hard, like, yeah way too hard for that. Like that was yeah. just not going to help her. And so yeah. like that low energy and that not feeling strong enough, um, could totally come from diet. And it could, it could be that if you, you know, take a scan for someone, if you take a scan and then are not seeing the muscle gain, but you have like, you feel stronger, it could, that could be the rolling, like the start of it. Right. And then it just keeps rolling to like gaining muscle. It could be the start of like, your body's responding to you actually eating enough. So you feel stronger. And then from there you'll lift more and then put the muscle on. So eat more. Uh, Everyone question, really should. We're going to question two. Do you think we, we covered question one? Yeah. Is there anything you want to, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, we talked about diet, muscle memory, and um, 
repetitions. Yep. I think that's good. Question dos. This is something that we uh, came up with uh, during the similar type of question is as you're going through your process or as you're going through your journey, your fitness journey, you start to build muscle. And sometimes the scale goes up maybe a little bit or stays the same. And why does that happen? I, I've seen it a lot of times with clients, especially around that second, third week when they're like really starting to, you know, work out often because they're having to build the muscle. But that's something we, we want to talk about. Why does the scale stay the same or go up when I've been working out hard for the, the last three weeks? So the like quick answer, right, is that muscle is weighs more than fat. Like simple, quick, like literally that's the answer. Like you're... Mm -hmm. Muscle is going to, uh, or it does weigh more than fat. So usually what happens is it starts to transfer. So you'll, um, the weight transfers to muscle. So you'll be losing fat, but gaining muscle and the weight you'll see, like the numbers stay the same, but your body starts to look different and you start to feel different. So I always like to tell clients to like, not focus on the number on the scale and to not weigh themselves for what, maybe like six weeks would be ideal. Um, so then like by that sixth week, maybe they'll see the number on the scale actually change. But by that sixth week, they're seeing like their body composition, like totally change. Right. So that's like, that's the, I think one of the biggest hangups, honestly, is people weighing themselves way too soon. And they're like, oh my gosh, like I haven't lost weight. The number is not you know, moving, whatever, or the number has gone up. That totally freaks people out. But then when you start to explain that to them, and if you explain that prior to like going into it, then they understand the process and they'll kind of trust it and hopefully push off that, like weighing themselves part. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. And that's, uh, I'm one to push on weighing every day. Cause I think some, some high school guys, uh, love to weigh themselves, but the scale is something that like, you know, you, you mentally deal with hundred percent, six weeks, or even just like, don't, you know, that's something that's like, just how, how are you feeling? you know, are you getting stronger and how are your clothes fitting? I feel like you put it best is like you know, the scale is going to stay the same or change, but it's about how you feel. Um, yeah. I think if you have an unhealthy relationship with weight and the scale, then I would say just throw it away yeah. because you don't need it. You don't need the scale to tell you how you're feeling, but for like someone like you, that is like very in tune with like what you're eating, like the muscle that you have on your body, like sometimes you're cutting sometimes you're you know bulking like it the scale is a great tool but for others it's it could be just like psychologically not great 100 percent, <laughs> yeah so yeah if you've ever experienced that where you worked out hard the last three weeks or you're just starting a new fitness program or you're starting a fitness journey on january 1st and you're like three weeks in you you're proud of yourself you feel different you 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 look different but on the scale is the same or it's gone up, just know that you're probably gaining muscle. You know, you're definitely going down the right path and don't stop just because the scale number says this certain number. Know that you're doing the right habits, you're doing the right behaviors, and then eventually, you know, everything will be put to where it needs to be. Yeah, true. And I'll give you a good example because um, I have a friend at the gym. She's a trainer and she, like, within the last... Oh my gosh. I actually, timing wise, I don't know. So I'm not even going to say, but within whatever timing for the last year, let's just say she had hit her like heaviest weight, mm -hmm. but she didn't love her body composition. So she felt like she had too much fat on her body. Um, and she was the heaviest she'd ever been, but there was like some muscle in there, obviously. So what she did was like just super dial in her diet and then workouts and stuff. She started lifting heavier and then she actually started to eat a lot. Um, but because she had to she had to feed those, you know, and eat enough to feed the, have energy for those workouts. Right. Um, so her weight actually never went down and never really went up. Her weight stayed the same. She was the heaviest she had ever been and her weight stayed exactly the same, but she is like 15% body fat and her body has like completely changed. And she has so much muscle on her body now. Hey. And so it's like her transformation was really cool because she that's awesome. complete right it's it's and it's so cool to see too like she completely replaced like the fat on her body with muscle and she weighs the exact same and if you if you were her and like weighed yourself and you're like oh the number didn't go down you were bumming yeah. the number didn't go down but it would be ridiculous because she looks amazing her body yeah. fat is super low she's got a crap ton of muscle she's eating a ton yeah <laughs> she yeah, feels yeah, yeah. and she feels yeah. great so yeah. that's an i'd like to 
I like to give that example to people so that they understand and they kind of get it. Hopefully like it just starts to like make sense that the number on the scale is just literally a number. Like it, yeah, it's like about how you feel, how you look and and yeah. it just gives you one number. You know, I, I'm, I just thought about this right now. It's just like going, like having us going to school and you base all of your GPA off of one class. Right. So there's math, there's science, there's English, there's PE, there's history. There's, and that's your cumulative, you know, like, yeah, there's the scale, but then what's your body fat percentage? What's your BMI? What's your, you know, I mean, all these different things. What's your cholesterol level? What's your, yeah. Uh, what's your heart rate or heart, a uh, heart, uh, this is bad heart. What's it called? The heart. Blood pressure, put something here. You put something here. Uh, blood pressure. You know, there's these so many. You know, your stress levels, your anxiety. There's so many different like you know, metrics. KPI, exactly KPIs to your health. Besides, you step on one little machine, it gives you one little number. Um, I love that example. That's that's a great example. And like you know, there's there's I, those stories make me like so happy because like the, you see the person kind of change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you, I know you've seen clients. I've seen clients. Even just like as soon as you see that change, that's what you should be like kind of like wanting to strive for, not just like a number on the scales. Like, am I becoming the person that I want to become, you know, rather than just a number? Yeah, I totally I love that. And I totally agree because it is literally just one metric. And there's so many metrics to health so many. that your weight, weight does not weight does not. What is the word I need? Weight doesn't like decipher your health. Your weight does not decipher your health. Just because you are a certain number, that doesn't mean you're yeah. healthy or not healthy. There's so many other things that go into it. So um, yeah, I think that grades thing in school is a good example. I like that. Cool. That was hey, covered you know, well too. Huh? I said, cool. That was covered super well too. I think we're good. <laughs> um, anything else that you want to add? I also really like, so I got my notes today. I do like the six weeks thing. Cause this is something that I think that like a lot of people, especially like what I've seen with, uh, and I talked about this with like, you know, one of my, uh, clients, you know, girls, you know, and specifically don't like the scale guys love the scale, you know, girls, not so much. Um, and so like, why me, is that? Why is that? Yeah. I just know guys like to be big and they like to put on muscle and they just think the heavier they are, the better. Uh... I think sometimes I like guess some point that does change when you get older, you know, you start to be like, maybe this isn't a good, you know, route, but when you're young, you're like, you're growing. So you're like, how, how fast can I grow? Yeah, um, you're right. That's and there's true. stages, you know, there's stages to, I think fitness, you know, there's certain things that I would tell my kids to do that I would never tell a personal training client or parent to do, you know, and yeah. vice versa. So yeah. knowing, you know, what advice you're even listening to, Maybe you don't even listen to us. You know, maybe, heck, maybe you were, you know, we're not for it. We're not, you know, we're the right. But anyway, knowing what kind of like who who to us to or have they done what I've done anyway. That's six <laughs> weeks thing. I like the six weeks thing. It's like wait six weeks. If you're starting a program, you know, if, if you're someone that gets anxious about numbers or someone that's like that, wait six weeks. I used to tell it to, to clients and, and, and that's a really good one that you brought up. So just wanted to bring that up. Yeah. But yeah, I think. That wraps up the show with question one and question two. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching Coach's Corner. Ashley, Coach Ashley. Coach Malik. And we will see you guys next episode. Bye.